Times of Malta is, I mean, it's the oldest daily newspaper in Malta. I think it was founded in 1935, if I remember well. Um, it's an English language uh, media house. Um, and it's run as a regular media house. So we have a printed newspaper every day. We have a Sunday edition of the paper. And we're a regular media house with journalists and this sort of thing. But we've started this fact-checking project, which is relatively new. It's only a couple of months old. Um, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're working with, with European partners on it. It's kind of a new experience for us, because whereas before fact-checking was, and still is, a kind of a regular part of every journalist's work to a certain degree, what we're doing now is we're fact-checking public statements mm -hmm. And, and information that is out in the public, which isn't something that we used to do before, or as we didn't used to do it on a systematic basis. So now we'll, um, we'll identify a statement that a public figure has made, or a, uh, a manipulated image, or a manipulated video, or, or, or some sort of information that we believe might not be factual. And we actively try to, uh, to debunk it, or to understand whether it's, it's true or not. We're also receiving requests from the public. So um, underneath each of our fact checks, we have a little form basically where we ask people to submit requests to, to fact check a certain piece of information. And we receive quite a lot of requests actually, ranging from statements a politician has made mm -hmm. to uh, a TV advert that is claiming something and the person doesn't believe that's true, or it could be... Um, I don't know, uh, a statement made within a, a newspaper article or an opinion piece, and we don't believe that's, uh, the person doesn't believe that's true. So the range of topics is quite varied. We, uh, to a certain extent, we follow the news cycle. So, uh, for instance, recently there was a, a local controversy about um, a hospitals deal, and that was quite broadly discussed uh, in general, and we tried to fact-check a number of things related to that hospital deal. So people were, you know, throwing around a lot of numbers about how much this deal cost. We tried to look into what is true and what isn't. Uh, the Prime Minister made a number of statements. We tried to kind of fact check those because he made a speech in Parliament. So we do kind of follow the news cycle broadly. But then we also come across different things in terms of um, uh, people making statements about infrastructure projects, people making statements about um, healthcare. So for instance, we had a fact check about, about abortion, um, where uh, the government is proposing to introduce a uh, an amendment to, to the law that would allow abortion in certain cases. But you also had medical professionals that were citing figures that turned out not to be true or not to be accurate. So we, we and they were being cited in court, which is quite a problematic place to, to uh, cite misinformation. Um, so we we carried out a fact, fact check on that. Um, so, the, I mean, it's quite a broad range of things. We, we also come across certain instances of misinformation that are kind of spread from abroad mostly around issues like migration, for instance, uh, around COVID, things like that. Um, but those were a little better place to fact-check them because very often we find that they've already been fact-checked by, by a partner organization, so it's kind of simpler to fact-check. What's a little more difficult is um, when you have, for instance, a political figure who is, who is saying something but changing the context or stripping it of context or decontextualizing it. And that makes it more difficult to, to, to fact check because what they may be saying could poten potentially be true, but it's being said within a particular context for political reasons or for, for whatever reasons. And I know, I know there are some people who call this um, malinformation which is, I think, quite a good term to kind of talk about how something can be factually true, but when you strip it of context or when you change the, uh, the context in which it's being presented, it becomes uh, an instance of disinformation.